Alright, so if you're ever in the content public discord, I apologize in advance because you've probably heard me blabber on about this subject for the past two weeks now. <laughs> so this is a very niche subject which affects many popular video games in this day and age. Today's subject is going to be power creep and item progression. Power creep is the idea of characters, items, and features being less desirable as newer, more desirable and powerful expansions are added. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'll give an example in the context of Realm. Think of where high level players would have gone to grind life pots maybe 5 years ago. If you thought of the Tomb of the Ancients, you'd be correct. Still to this day, the dungeon is pretty reliable for dropping life potions, but they've definitely dropped in popularity over the years. Why is this you may ask? You need to think of the surrounding loot table from the Tomb of the Ancients. A very subpar ST set, some decent rings but two of them have faded into non-existence, and an incredibly situational barred UT. Since then, other dungeons have been introduced which have proven to be just as reliable, if not more reliable, source of life potions. The best example of this would be the Lost Halls and Void. Lost Halls have become the more desirable source of life potions because A. The tomb was barbaric and torturous to clear. Honestly, the fact that the dungeon requires a rusher to take less than 15 minutes is an actual joke. It just feels like artificial difficulty that wasn't intended from the very start. Why have such a variety of enemies in the tomb if they're never killed? B. The Lost Halls has a great loot table which offers some best in slot items such as the Sword of the Colossus, Magical Lodestone, Marble Seal, Void Bow, and Omnipotence Ring. Also, the fact that it gives every other potion in the game via the cultist and pot rooms is a nice addition. I know treasure sacks also give rainbow pots, so that's not really the point. <laughs> and then C, the general community became a lot more interested in lost souls than tombs. Like, see? Like, there's so many simple things that we don't talk about, but it's a driving factor for the game's evolution. Alright, so let's talk about power creep in the context of items. For some reason, there's some weird mentality that high level players that if the item isn't completely best in slot, the item's considered hot garbage. Unless the power is somewhat similar to its superior. That's somewhat besides the point, but that's what makes people think items are terrible when maybe they just aren't. An item which has suffered due to numerous patches and updates would be the Demon Blade. The sword has fallen out of the meta harder than Deathless Crossbow a couple patches ago. And that's saying something. But, 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 Avro, I love Demon Blade. Look at the DPS output. <laughs> nah. <laughs> the item is almost a true range of 1.4. There are very limited scenarios where you can use the sword to its maximum potential. Now, especially with the in combat and out of combat changes to the game. I think it's safe to say it's pretty obvious what sword has overtaken the Demon Blade in the role it used to succeed within. And that'd be the Pixie Sword. Sure, it does a little bit less DPS than the Demon Blade, but it's a lot more reliable when it comes to both clearing minions and killing bosses. From what you can tell on the DPS graph, Pixie Sword's usability is massively dependent on whether the target is armor broken or not. You know how I was previously talking about tombs becoming obsolete due to the release of other dungeons? I'm now going to give an example which shows where instead of the dungeon becoming obsolete, it's barely lost any of its value. It's a pretty obscure dungeon, so you probably wouldn't have heard of it. Sure, this may seem incredibly obvious, but here's the explanation to why the dungeon is still so desirable even with the release of Auric Sanctuary. The dungeon offers plentiful array of potions and some best in slot items. That's pretty much it. The Marvel Colossus offers multiple best in slot items and the Cultist offers a robe which is still really good even with the release of Auric Sanctuary and its robes. The Star from Cultist is really good for wave clear, and the ring is basically an upgraded pyro with whiz instead of attack. Cult Skull, you know, just, it's there. <laughs> it exists. The Void offers some alright equipment, but I'm not particularly a fan of them because of my massive bias against Archer. The point is, this is a really easy subject to wrap your head around, but it's just something that isn't really talked about with the game as small as Realm. I'll give one more example. Arguably the items which have been affected the most by power creep, and holy shit did these items become obsolete. You guessed it. The Lair of Draconis items. Like, holy god these items fell from grace. Oh, and when I'm talking about this, I'm particularly talking about the heavy armor and the robe. One could argue that Indica Bam Era, Fire Dragon Battle Armor, and Water Dragon Silk Robe were the best in slot items for its time. But slowly and slowly, as time went on and other dungeons got released, these whites faded into non existence. Or did they? One of these two items is still considered to be really good, even to this day. And I'm sure you can guess which one it is, to be honest. <laughs> Fire Dragon's still not so great anymore. Oh, and just as a quick reminder, I'm not fully aware of the average skill level of my viewers, but if you're a low to mid tier player, don't let this video steer you away from using these items. They're still alright, they've just been outclassed by other items that have been introduced in late game dungeons. There are so many items in the game which have just faded into nothing because players have no use for them because they get newer, more powerful items. Which I feel like could be seen as a flaw, but the game is based on progression, so I guess that is just how it is. I don't like using other games to compare with subjects like this, but I'm going to have to in this case. Alright, so I used to play this Minecraft server called Wincraft. 
This was an MMORPG server. It was pretty fun. Within this game, the way weapons work is that there are five elements. Fire, air, earth, water, and thunder. Each weapon had a certain element of damage, and the enemies in the game had resistances to elements and weaknesses to elements. You see, this alone incentivizes players to have some form of variety by maybe using slightly worse weapons to make up for the lack of damage you'll get from the resistances of enemies. I feel like Decker could introduce a system like this, but obviously not the same because somehow there'd be a game-breaking bug which blows up the servers and resets everybody's account, but I'm sure it would make combat a lot more interesting in the long run. My next point is something that should always be kept in mind when listening to the opinions about items from players you may be seeking assistance of. Unless the item has a progression system such as the tiered items, never, ever compare an item to another item when you're trying to consider what is good and what is bad as an item. I said previously about endgame players having a toxic mentality, there's a running theme that if the item isn't considered best in slot, it's considered bad. You shouldn't compare items, instead you should analyse the situation in which you want to use the item. But of course there's the argument that if you have a specific item, you don't need any other swap outs in the slot. A determining factor of what makes a weapon good against a certain enemy would be the defence stat of it. Let's say, the Golem in the Lost Tools. That thing has a crap ton of defence. Whilst the tier 14 star for superior is considered best in slot for the class, Tezzacotl's tail would be really good for this situation. The reason I bring up this weapon is because I actually do see a lot of players calling Tezzacotl's tail bad, because of how situational it can be. The thing is, the weapon excels in the situations it is used in. You see my point? It, it's pretty simple. The way I like to think about it is like how the Terraria wiki works. When you're looking for an item that's good in a specific class, on the wiki it shows what items are good. Some of the items are good in a couple of stages of the game, whereas some are just complete upgrades and you need them in order to progress. You know what, I really hope that makes sense actually. <laughs> My point is that sometimes you need to sacrifice some stats to make up for a deficit. I can understand that this video is probably dragging on a little bit, so I'm going to make the conclusion short and snappy. <laughs> I would really like to know everybody else's opinion on this matter. Please voice all of your opinions in the comments and I'll reply to every single one of them. This subject goes pretty deep and I'm more than certain there's a lot of stuff I missed out on. But hey, let's keep it civil. If you disagree with anything I said, please let me know. I'm always open for discussion. If there's anything else you want me to talk about, please message me on Discord. My Discord will be linked in the description. I have a few video ideas lined up actually. I'll probably end up putting a poll on the community tab to see what video you want to see next. One video that I hope to get out by the end of next week is my Exaltations video. If you've seen me around the realm at all, you've probably come to realise that I fully exalted the wizard class. I was the 20th person to exalt the wizard, which is still quite the achievement, judging by the fact that since Exaltations got added to the game, I've been trying to push out videos, work, I've moved house, and started my university course. But hey, I can't give myself too much credit because I am still massively addicted to this game. I'd also to give a massive shout out to Craykiller for helping me out with a lot of the information in this video. You're an absolute legend, thank you.